Uh, next talk is going to be given by Bert Boomer, and uh, he's professor at Harvard Medical School and associate physicist at Wellman Center for Photomedicine at Mass General Hospital. And he will be talking about endoscopic optical coherence tomography. Okay, good evening. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I thought that I was a third speaker. So my institution requires that I divulge my potential conflicts of interest. Um, I'd like to start just with a quick background on OCT. OCT was first developed for ophthalmic imaging. Uh, the first prototype as well as the first human studies were demonstrated in 91 by the MIT group of Professor Fujimoto with uh, subsequent important contributions from Vienna. Uh, the technology was commercialized in the mid 90s and it has now become truly the gold standard for the diagnosis of especially retinal pathologies with wide clinical adoption and uh, multiple com uh, commercial systems available. And it's really a tremendous uh, success story for the field of biomedical optics. In fact, uh, recent success of uh, even uh, ophthalmic imaging on the International Space Station with the Heidelberg Engineering System. So really uh, kudos to, the, to that group for qualifying a, a system for space flight. Um, the first prototype uh, end endoscopic system was used in uh, animals in 1997. A few years after that, in about 2000, several groups uh, published results for upper GI endoscopy, showing structures of the upper GI tract that had never been seen before uh, without excision uh, in humans. And then in 2002, the first intracoronary imaging was demonstrated by a, an international collaboration and again, in this case, uh, demonstrated image quality that represented structures that had never been seen in living human subjects before. So it generated quite a bit of uh, enthusiasm in the research groups. However, despite publication uh, within very high visibility journals and at conferences, the clinical community remained quite skeptical. And it wasn't until about 2003 with the advent of uh, th this insight of detection through the Fourier domain uh, where we, re we realize a dramatic improvement in detection sensitivity, and that improved sensitivity can be translated into higher speed imaging, and therefore uh, um, transitioning from sort of point sampling, single cross-sectional imaging, to imaging over wide fields of view, and instead of getting a single cross-section, uh, we'd see um, entire coronary arteries, for example, or the entire GI tract. That technology was commercialized beginning in uh, 2008. Uh, two companies have commercial cardiovascular systems, Light Lab, St. Jude, and the Trumo Corporation. Currently, um, there are about 100,000 of these procedures done annually, uh, and that is quite exciting. However, really, that's only less than 10% of uh, interventional cases throughout the world, so it, it's yet to be seen what the uh, uh, clinical and commercial adoption of that technology will be for cardiovascular imaging. In the GI case, a startup company, Nine Point Medical, began selling systems a little over a year ago. They've sold over 30 consoles, and uh, those consoles have been used to conduct over 1,500 procedures. And although that's really uh, the beginning, this uh, case, uh, case report that I'm going to uh, mention here is quite encouraging. This was a subject that had been referred to Columbia University Medical Center with a prior diagnosis of uh, high-grade dysplasia, a precancerous condition of the esophagus and the patient had been treated with radiofrequency ablation. Um, under white light examination by endo endoscopy and by narrow band imaging through the, the hands of the expert, there was no um, identification of areas of concern. However, with subsequent uh, comprehensive imaging, the full six centimeters of the distal esophagus by OCT, a region of uh, 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 subsurface structure thought to be consistent with buried metaplasia was identified and resected using endoscopic mucosal resection. The biopsy indicated uh, subsurface disease. So this was a quite uh, exciting finding of, of demonstrating uh, disease diagnosis which couldn't be obtained with either conventional imaging or biopsy. Um, it's, it's evident to me that the advances in OCT over the years have been driven by a very diverse international community. So what I wanted to do tonight was to give vignettes of some of the most recent uh, exciting advances from this community. Uh, one result has been in the area of improving image speed. Um, the group, the collaboration based at Erasmus Medical Center has just demonstrated a greater than 20-fold increase in imaging speed over what we thought was already high-speed imaging 
to greater than 3,000 frames per second. That's based on uh, a high uh, repetition rate scanning um, laser and a distal motor as demonstrated in this figure. And the importance for that for cardiovascular imaging is schematically depicted here. In the upper row, we see a pullback performed with what used to be high-speed imaging, 160 frames per second. That pullback is acquired over multiple cycles of the, of the uh, cardiac function, so you see motion artifacts that arise, whereas the lower row of, uh, of, of images was performed with this new heartbeat OCT, where the entire pullback can be obtained during one cardiac cycle and dramatic improvement in that cross-sectional image quality. The MIT group has also applied um, high-speed imaging with a distal motor for GI applications, and that <clears throat> improved scanning density and scanning quality has resulted in a really marked improvement in the image quality, and also the ability to visualize the uh, capillaries, the, the blood capillaries within the epithelia of the esophagus, I think opening new opportunities for diagnostic cues in the GI case. Um, Johannes de Boer's group in, in Amsterdam has been uh, applying these distal motors also for pulmonary imaging, and I think that uh, the distal motors are going to continue to show a, a really uh, significant impact in a number of different clinical areas in the near future. OCT gives a great deal of microstructural information, but it doesn't provide a great deal of uh, molecular specificity, so linking OCT with other modalities is becoming interesting. The Chen group at Irvine has demonstrated the, the uh, a single catheter that performs both deeply penetrating but lower resolution ultrasound as well as high resolution near field imaging with OCT. I think that's going to be read, readily uh, adapted by the clinical cardiology community. Um, William O's group at KAIST in Korea has just recently demonstrated the combination of structural imaging with OCT as well as near-infrared fluorescence imaging um, through the same catheter, and they're using endocyanine green as a marker for inflammation to detect, in this case, uh, the uh, influence of inflammation on 14 days after stenting. You can see in that high-resolution structural image, you can de depict the individual stent struts, and then through the fluorescence can detect the uh, label of inflammation. Probe improvements are continuing to drive uh, the new um, opportunities in OCT. Uh, the Sampson group in Australia has demonstrated a number of really neat little needles that can be inserted within different uh, uh, tissues that were, are suspected to have tumors. And one application of that I think is the most exciting perhaps is the use of that needle type approach for elastography. By inserting the needle you're exerting a force on the tissue and then you can me measure the uh, strain response of the tissue with the OCT image and from that get a measure of the stiffness and compliance of the tissue, and I think that's going to have a great impact for guiding fine needle aspiration in the case of um, uh, breast cancer detection. Um, uh, upper GI imaging has been traditionally performed with a balloon that's passed through the endoscope. That process requires conscious sedation. It's quite expensive, and therefore that can't be applied for screening applications. If we take the endoscope out of the, out of the uh, environment, perhaps we can overcome that. Um, potentially by using a tethered capsule. So in this case, without end the endoscope, without conscious sedation, the patient can pa uh, pass the tethered capsule down and, and very high quality imaging can be performed either while the probe is being taken down through peristalsis or being brought back up by retraction of the tether. Polarization sensitive imaging is a great way to see uh, features like smooth muscle cells and collagen. It has numerous applications across a couple of different clinical fields. Um, it was observed that uh, performing accurate quantitative PS imaging through a fiber is really problematic because of an effect called polarization mode dispersion. Um, two different approaches have been demonstrated by measuring distal reflections and calibrating out the PMD to correct for those distortions, and most recently an exciting result by Boy Braff in Johannes' group in Amsterdam, uh, demonstrating a really simple, elegant approach for uh, implementing that. The net result being that now we can perform very uh, reproducible quantitative measurements of birefringents. That's captured here in this uh, uh, set of images. On, on the left is an, just a, a structural cross-sectional intensity image by OCT. In the middle is a measure of birefringents and on the right is a measure of the degree of polarization uniformity. It's a measure of the uniformity of the birefringence distribution in the tissue. And in both of those right images, the uh, birefringence signal is encoded by color, and then the intensity image is encolored by the brightness. So you get both a structural and 
the, uh, the biorefringence inf information simultaneously. This is the simultaneously. This is the pullback through a coronary artery. And if you look at about 7 o'clock in the middle image, you see quite a bit more structure in the biofringage image that we don't see in the intensity image. And what we're looking at right now is the ability to reproducibly quantify those features. These are two subsequent pullbacks in the same geographic location. You can see just one-to-one -one correspondence between those measurements. So very good, very high degree of reproducibility. This is also being applied for better discrimination between fibrosis and scarring in the lung and, and tumor for potentially uh, guiding um, biopsy. Biopsy guidance is a, is a very hot area. Um, what's been done to date is to insert a balloon, for example, in the esophagus, get the volumetric scan, identify regions of pathology, and then couple in a laser that has enough energy to coagulate the tissue and leave a white mark, pull the balloon out, go back with an endoscope and biopsy. However, that uh, process with a CW later laser is too cumbersome and uh, requires stopping the imaging, holding everything fixed, hoping that your imaging beam and the, uh, the coagulating beam doesn't move. Uh, recently, we've developed a Raman shifted ytterbium fiber laser, which gives enough pulse energy to do a coagulative mark all in about uh, uh, 100 microseconds. This image on the left is going to be a movie as I run it, a cross-sectional image of poor sign esophagus ex vivo and the, the corresponding white light image uh, from above. And what you'll see is a sequence of marks being delivered by single pulses of the, uh, of the Raman shifted fiber laser as that uh, image is being acquired. So this would be a way for us to go from laser marking, just leaving single marks, to uh, laser printing, if you will. So on the, on the right hand side there is an esophagus on which the pattern has been etched and the esophagus is, in, is inverted for subsequent examination. So sorry for that whirlwind tour. What I tried to convey is uh, a, a great surge of advancements from a number of different groups throughout the world. Uh, I think you'll be able to catch most of this work pre being presented at the conference. I'd like to acknowledge both uh, the internal MGH collaborators as well as the contributors to the, to the talk tonight. Thanks. Thank you.